what is going on everybody it is your favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of love and hip-hop miami this is season three episode four blurred lines okay y'all before we get into this review regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet please go ahead subscribe to my channel auntie show sure enough appreciate you and i show sure enough love you for it when you leave or before you leave <laughs> let me know that you stopped by give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all i also want to give y'all an update about my brother larry aka pookie that's what we call him in the family i went and um see first of all again thank y'all for your continued prayers your continued thoughts Y'all are so sweet, and please believe me, he is receiving all of y'all's love. Um, first of all, to all the females that have asked me, is he taken? Yes, he is very much so taken by his lovely fiance, Miss Latoya. Okay, a toya, I think it's Latoya. I don't know if it's Latoya, but Toya, that's his lady right there. They are together, and they will be getting married pretty soon. So, can't wait for you to get out the hospital, bruh, so we can get this whole wedding thing popping and all that. But anyways, I went and seen him today and he's doing a lot better. He opened his eyes. Um, he was able to squeeze my hand when I was talking to him. He can't move his right side, his right arm just yet. Um, cause it's in a cast and he's got a bunch of tubes and stuff, but, um, he, he was able to blink his eyes when I was talking to him. He can move his legs and all that. And, um, he, he, He's a strong guy, so, you know, they were saying that, you know, with, with him being such a, a, a big guy, big muscular guy, and having, you know, the, the impact of everything that happened in the wreck, it's going to take him a long road to recovery, but, y'all, he is doing good. He appreciates all the love from everybody. Um, hopefully, by tomorrow, when I go up there and see him, the tubes will be out. He will be able to, to you know, start eating and, and, and doing stuff like that, so, y'all, thank y'all so much from the bottom of your auntie little old ratchet heart thank you so much for praying for my brother and for thinking about him because it, it it means so much that off the strength of you loving me you praying for my brother y'all just y'all i just can't say thank you no just thank you y'all see that go that look up mm -mm, no we not no we not hopefully y'all are ready for this review because i'm ready to give it to you mm. Let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So, I picked up where the last one left off. We got a, uh, MJ and Julian over here going at it back to box. Amada over here dying in the damn corner. She, uh, I, I think I'm going to pass out. I think it was all a front, to be quite honest. She's seen MJ and Julian over there about to fist the cup, and she didn't want none of that shit to go down. So, she was like, okay, let me die in the corner real quick to break up this shit that's going on, right? So, MJ ends up going over there, checking on Amada. Julia um, ends up leaving. Uh, now, Amada was sitting over there with Prima Donna, right? So, she was like, I don't know what's going on with her, y'all. Y'all gonna have to get her some milk or something. MJ like, girl, what's going on with you? You need some water? Drink some water and shit. You up here dying and shit. Ain't nobody coming here for you be dying and all that. I'm trying to check this nigga of what the hell he did. Prima Donna like, well, hell, what the hell he do? Shit, let a bitch in. What he do? This nigga MJ starts going to run in his mouth talking about, yeah, about six months ago, he tried to slide up in the bed with a Amada. I want to see his ass then. Amada's like, oh my God, I told you not to say anything. Why would you even say something? Because he had to get his little old two minutes of fame in Why he can, Why he got the camera on his ass right now. So Amada got pissed. She was like, no, I, I didn't want you to do that. Julian, it's my friend. So she got up. She left. MJ had to go behind this woman because, of course, that was his ride. And he ain't had no money for no damn Uber. So, he had to go because, you know, the lady was ready to go. So, meanwhile, you have Shay Briscoe and Nikki Natural. They're still all at the party. Still going on the Briscoe party, y'all. They sitting at a table and they talking, right? Now, meanwhile, you got hood brat Sukiana Joy and, um, um, what was that? That twerk for Jesus chick. A dropper for Jesus, whoever she was, she was there too, right? They was all sitting over there, you know, in their little area together, right? Hood Brat then proceeds to tell them, well, look here. Nikki Natural came by the bar the other day, and uh, I didn't want to say nothing then, you know what I'm saying? But she was saying how she did better than all the mother hoes here, and I was like, are you for real? Because my homegirl, Suki was there too. You did better than Suki. She was like, yeah, I did better than Suki. I did better than all them hoes up in there. 
Now, hood brats say her and Sukiana go back, way back, like four flats on a Cadillac and, and Tic Tacs on the back. They go all the way back. So if you got a problem with a homegirl, you got a problem with her. You on her shit list. But this is my thing right here, though. Time out. Pause the play. Now, anybody who knows me knows my best friend is Katrina. Trina. That's my bitch. That's, I take off the earrings for my knees. You know what I'm saying? So, if me and you, it's not like me and you, you, who I, me and you, 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 I'm talking to you. Me and you was talking, and then you say something about my homegirl, Trina. You like, well, yeah, um, I think I'm, uh, I know Trina's a brown-skinned girl, but I'm a browner brown-skinned girl, and I think I look better than her anyway. Pause for the calls. Me and you gonna have a problem. I'm gonna check you right then and there. I'm not gonna sit and marinate on it to come back and let you know about it. And so you can get pissed off. No, you gonna hear about the aftermath after I done already checked her and, and did all that I had to do. Like, that's just me though. I don't know how y'all do it in Miami, but here in Texas, I'm gonna check you right then and there. If you talking about my homegirl, I'm not finna sit and wait and, and, and come and tell you about it later. When If you my homegirl, we go way back like four flats on a Cadillac and some Tic Tacs. Bitch, you need to be checking her right then and there too. Why would you marinate on that to come back and tell me that? I'm just saying, I can't speak for nobody else. Sukiana hot. She, she mad. <laughs> she hopped in the firecrack. She said, I'm ready to go check one of these puss ass hoes. So Suki goes over to the table where Nikki Natural, Bucky, and Briscoe is at, right? Suki then pretend, you know, she speaks to everybody. Hey, Briscoe, heard about you. Hey, boo, talking to Shay. Mm, hey. So, um, Nikki, so I had heard that you said to Hood Brad that I was better or you thought you was better than me and you thought you did better than me when I know I did better than you. So, like, what's up, pussy asshole? What's good? Now, I understand, you know what I'm saying? Sookie don't like these hoes talking crap about her. Now, I kind of feel Nikki. Nikki was like, look here, I'm an artist too. I'm not finna sit up there and be like, you know, this chick was better than me and, and I didn't do good, this, that, and the other. Whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. But then at the same time, like Sookie said, you could have just been like, you know what? I wasn't worried about nobody else. I was there on my shit. I was on my grind. Uh, they did okay. And, you know, I, I did good as well. Like, you ain't have to knock the next female. And I totally understand Suki when she was saying that or whatever, right? Cha, as they're talking, here come Bucky with her two cents. Bucky, girl, you ain't got nothing to do. You, after all this time... Flavor of Love was what? 07, 05, 04, 32, something like that. Girl, you should have been done, had a bunch of shit up under your belt by now. Not sitting up here arguing with these babies over nothing. I understand that she was trying to break it up, saying that I don't think she was doing this, and I don't think, I understand that. But at the same time, mama, you need to know when you got to step your ass out, and that just wasn't your, 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 battle, your battle to fight right there. You should have stayed the whole, stay in the old bitch place. You ain't got nothing to do with that young shit right there. Child and Sookie gets pissed off at Bucky, cause her old stank ass, Puss ass, stank ass hoe. <laughs> I was like, really? Suki? Damn. Everybody can get it. Suki is with all the shits. Everybody's a puss ass hoe. That's just, that's just what it is. Child, they proceed to go at it where um, Shay, uh, Bucky grabs a, a part of Suki's outfit off. She rips a part of a sleeve off. Then she takes it, starts to whip around her head like a helicopter. Just on some real childish shit. Just real childish shit. Her and Sookie start going back and forth. Shay throws a drink at her. Classic hood bitch shit. You gonna throw a drink. Like, y'all, stop it. And then once again, security is can Bucky's ass on up out of there. Girl, you too old for this. You about my damn age. Girl, you too old for this. So Prima Donna Miami tip. They sit back. They at the park. They chopping it up, chilling, talking or whatever. Prima Donna says how, um, well, she's telling Miami tip about everything that happened at the party. Um, they bring up Sukiana. That's when uh, Miami tip is like, you know, that's my artist. I manage her. I just want her to do better. If she do better, she do better. The bitch grew better. I'm 
just trying to groom her into this artist that I know that she can become or whatever, right? Then Miami Tip asked Prima Donna, like, what's up with you, bitch? Me and you was cool. We was kicking and shit, and all of a sudden, you up and moved to Atlanta. Didn't nobody know what the hell that was going on, bitch. I'm reaching out to you, texting you, inboxing you, sliding up in DMs and shit, and you ain't hit me back like, what the hell? What's good, my nigga? She gonna say that, um... When she got a bag, she was just focused on getting the next bag. She wasn't worried about nobody she was leaving behind. She just up and jumped on the first thing, smoking down the ATL shawty, and that's the only thing she had in her mind. Now, I totally get that. Like, Miami's like, okay, I understand that, but bitch, you can't forget about the motherfuckers that roll with you. You gonna need somebody to buy your motherfucking product, ain't you? And Prima Donna's like, well, speaking of product, I got a launch party coming up because I'm trying to get re out there and relaunch my shit. I got pressure cookers, I got seasoning, waist trainers, soap dispensers, fans, makeup brushes, LED lights, calendars, and shoes for the babies. So I got a launch party coming up. It's gonna be big. We're gonna do everything big. I would love to hear Shekinah, Shekinah Joe and Prima Donna have a conversation. I bet that is the funniest, most countryest ass conversation. Oh, I bet that's funny as hell. So she invites her out to the little lunch party, whatever. I want to buy a pressure cooker. What that thing do? Amada and MJ talk after everything that done went down. They're talking about everything that happened the night before at the party. Now, Amada is upset with MJ because she said, I told you about what happened with Julian and you weren't supposed to say anything. And no, he's going to be upset with me. That's going to stop my brand deals. That's going to stop my endorsements. He's going to stop promoting me like Julian is my everything. He's my friend. I don't have a plan B. Like, girl, oh my God. Okay, I get it. Now, Amada, this thing, you can't tell your nigga that another nigga tried to slide up on his thing and expect for him not to act a fool. Let me tell my husband that. He gonna have yellow caution tape around the whole goddamn block within a, the hour. You glad MJ hold on to that shit for six months and didn't say nothing? Really? Like, that's beyond me. I done said something to the nigga by now. He did good. He did real good. MJ is like, look here, this nigga done brainwashed you into thinking that you can't make no moves without him. That you basically need him to survive as an artist. Now, you can't have this nigga in your mind like that corrupting you the way you can't get to where the hell you need to be. Because he ain't did nothing for your career hardly just yet. Now, I was rocking with MJ until the nigga started turning to you and what you and you need to do into the we we, we, and what we need to do. He was like, you need to call, get on the phone with your lawyer, tell them we ain't happy with the contract. We want out the contract. This is what we want to do, and we need to do this. I was like, nigga, we, 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 this nigga talking a whole lot of French around this motherfucker. Where all this we, we come from? You been around for five years doing all of this shit with her this whole damn time for real? Now, later on, when they end up do going and meeting with the lawyer, um, or Amada ends up you know, meeting with her attorney or whatever, seeing what she would have to do and what she would actually lose by parting ways with Julian. Now, her lawyer let her know, like, hey, look at bitch, look, I done hollered at his lawyer, and according to his lawyer, Julian say, look here, anime, you want to go, bitch, you can go, but I got 100% of it everything. He wants 100% of her masters if she decides she wants to walk away. Now, he could be doing this, you know, because he like, you. how you just going to go to the lawyers and you ain't going to come to me about it? You just going to go to the lawyers so fuck it, I'm going to take everything? Or he can really be just this fucked up, shady ass dude that don't need to be out here managing no goddamn body. Because Julian looking shady as hell right now. Shady as hell. And of course, we already know her mind is like, no. How can Julian just do this, my friend? I would have done everything with Julian. Like, why? Those me. Girl, look, you just need to just cut Julian ass off, okay? Julian, <laughs> he done took your ass for a ride. Now it's time for you to get off. And hitch the next ride on to your destiny. Julian ain't it no more, Amada. You need to vomitos from that ass. Sukiana ends up meeting up with Miami Tip at the Crab Shack, girl. Lord, Sukiana comes in and all her ghetto glory. 
Where the trick set ready to spend money on this fat ass cat? Oh, I was like, whoa. Nigga, can we eat our crabs in peace? That's what I'd have said if I was a patron there. Hey, sucky, hey, girl. But, uh, ain't nobody been spending no money on that fat cat not up in here. Not after they spent all this money on these damn crab legs. And you coming up in here with all this hood shit. Let me eat my crab legs in peace. God damn. Miami like, girl, what the hell happened at the party? What the, like, what, what the hell? Girl, girl. Sook say, look here, puss ass hoes, disrespect me. I had asked, um, hood brat, what happened? Hood brat told me what happened, so I went over here asked what happened. And what I felt like as a woman, you could have said that. You know what I'm saying? I did good. But the hoe wanted to say that she was better than me. Bitch, you could never be better than me. Bitch, you could never. Not on my worst day, not on your best day. You could never. I was like, Sookie. Sucky girl, now look here. Some shit you just gonna have to let go. And that's what Miami trying to tell her. Miami tip is like, look here, girl. I'm been, I'm trying, you here. This is good, but I'm trying to get you here in order to do that. You gotta cut all this bullshit. You just gotta cut shit out. Now, Sookie say between Bucky and uh um Nikki Natural, somebody done stole her damn phone and she ready to take it to the streets. Look here. If it's an iPhone, you ain't got no iPhone finder on that bitch, I'd be at the door. I believe you got something belong to me. So we got Nikki Natural at the basketball court playing basketball with her three sons, Carlos, Santana, and Million. I was like, oh, Carlos Santana, that nigga play the hell out that goddamn guitar, don't that nigga down. Nikki Natural also proudly says she's got three kids with three baby daddies. Don't none of them want to have kids with nobody else because she breeds kings. You proud of that? You know what? Hey, look here, boo. You like it? I love it. It is what it is. Child Bucky brings her old messy ass on over there to the basketball court as well. She says she wanted to meet Nikki just to sit down and talk with her and just to talk about, just basically be messy and talk about Sukiana. Now, of course, they bring up the whole Sukiana thing. She was like, um, Nikki Natural does admit that she stole her phone. Just to prove a point to that bitch, don't be running up on me like that, though. When Suki find out that you got her damn phone, girl, Suki is a... She's a different breed. She the type of bitch carrying razor blade around in her mouth. Don't fuck with no crazy ass girl like that. She gonna cut your ass. That's what she do. Bucky like, oh yeah, you got your souvenir. I got my souvenir too. Pulls out the little sleeve part that she tore off of Sookie's outfit the night of Briscoe's party. Now look here. Who the fuck does that? Shay, you set yourself up for these scenarios for people to talk about you and dog your ass the way that they do. Why would you do that? First of all, Shay, you ain't got no friends your age. Why is you hanging around these babies? Joy goes over to Trick Daddy House. She got her nieces and her nephews with her. She says that they're still close with his kids, and she's still close with his kids as well. You know, y'all, they was together for 11 years. So, their whole family is really close, right? Um, Joy also wants to apologize to Trick. Well, she don't really apologize. She was like, well, you know, what had happened, or what I thought had happened with Briscoe and Nikki, probably really did have happened. So, I just come to let you know that. So, if you want to take La Mama back, you go take her back. Trick that like, no, that bitch is history. She's over with. I said, oh, she's history. She English class or some shit like that. He said, I was like, this nigga Trick Daddy. Come on through with them old ass goddamn grandpa analogies. Go ahead then, Trick Daddy. She history. She English class. Some shit like that, he said. I was like, oh, poor Trick. She was like, okay, so, so what do you want then? What kind of woman do you like? He gonna tell her, look in the mirror. Trick want that old thing back. I thought it was cute, though. I said, look at Trick up here looking like somebody old granddaddy trying to go and holler at some little young girl or whatever. That's cute. I like them together, though. But she made it known to his ass. Nigga, I love you. Oh, I love you with all my heart, but I don't want your Trick ass. I know this. Briscoe's in the studio with Hood Brat. They talking about Hood shit. 
um, let on hood brat goes to the park with her niece and nephew, you know, the one that she's caring for since her sister, you know, decided to take her own life or whatnot. She's been watching after her sister's kids. Her, along with her aunt, have been looking after her sister's kids. And so she's in the park, you know, it's a real cute scene. She's playing with the kids and she's like, all right, look here, little niggas, come on down here. Let me wrap a taste with you for a minute. Cause you know, hood brat hood. So she's sitting and she's talking with him and she was like, I just want to let y'all know, you know, y'all mama love y'all and she entrusted in me to look after y'all, you know what I'm saying? She get ready to cry. It was so cute. Little mama was like, oh, you fit the cry. She was like, yeah, baby, I am going look here. Let me tell you, I got to go hard and I got to grind for y'all. That's why every day I want y'all to know that y'all love. I love y'all. I know y'all won't come stay with me full time. I got to grind every day, go hard in the paint to make it. Now, I love that scene. It was touching. But you're talking to some little babies. They look like they was about five and six years old. They sitting there looking like... I mean, they babies. They didn't know. They didn't know. It was a cute scene, though. Cute babies. Cute girls. We got Trina Joy and Jocelyn Hernandez, baby. They sitting down having a little girl talk or whatever. They talking about the whole Briscoe party once again. That's what everybody was talking about. This whole damn episode, Briscoe party. We all knew whatever the hell happened, right? Then somehow or another, Joy ends up bringing up Prima Donna. Now, of course, we already know <laughs> Jocelyn has. Jocelyn say, who, you know, pretend Donna? Trina like, no, bitch, Prima Donna, you are, girl, stop playing, you already know, you mean Prima Piggly, Prima Ten Dollar, Trina like, look here, girl, what problem do y'all have, why can't y'all talk this out, what problem y'all had, that was probably pre-ten years ago, y'all can talk about it from now, of course, Johnson's like, I don't like people in their Piggly attitudes. She's just real rude and you try to do wrong to people. I don't like that. Jocelyn like, well, look here. I heard she got a party coming up. I'm going to send her a little gift. I was like, oh, shit. Any gift coming from Jocelyn's ass, you already know it's going to be no damn good. That was my paper that fell in the front, y'all. <laughs> so y'all sitting at a prima donna's party and in true Negro fashion, it's an all white party. And she the only one wearing an off color. She's wearing this green emerald sparkly dress. I did not like the dress at all. It was nah. I didn't I I was not feeling that dress at all. The dress looked horrible. And I don't even know Prima Donna to like a lover or not like at all, but I know I didn't like that dress. The dress no ma'am no ma'am briscoe there he going to holler at trick about um the whole situation with nikki tell him like look here the streets got it fucked up i ain't mess around with nikki i don't know where the hell that came from trick don't give a damn he like look here you can smash every last female i don't give a damn nikki natural is out the picture i'm over her ass it is what it is right then once he says he went on a date with joy that kind of got his ears perking up a little bit. He was like, you say you were on a date with, with who now? You say you were on a date with her? Y'all went, well, he wasn't really feeling that. That kind of had him hot there for a minute. But he was like, ah, right, you, know, you know, it is what it is. Next thing you know, Prima Donna goes and she gets on a little mic or whatever. She's saying little words, you know, thank you for coming now. Whoop the whoop, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Child, next thing you know, a truck starts to back up in the middle of her party. Now, we already know it's a love and hip-hop party, so ain't a whole lot of motherfuckers there, right? They did an aerial view over the party. I think they just meant to show the truck, but somehow they did a whole over the party, y'all. It was like 20 people in one bunch in the middle. I was like, damn, if this ain't some badass editing right there, you just showed all... <laughs> All the production crew that's there. Them money not real people. That's cast and production crew that was there. Them money not real people there at the damn party. Chai, as the truck is backing up, Prima Donna's still on the mic now. She like, oh, what, what, what is going on in here? Like a whole taco truck truck backing up in there. I was like, okay. <laughs> a bitch will take a kind of casada to go and a carnitas. While I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Carnitas, that's a Tejas thing, you know what I'm saying? It's a loop, Texas. But um, she like, okay, I don't know what the hell this is, what's going on with here. 
who bought the damn taco truck. Child, next thing you know, Jocelyn's ass pops up on the side of the truck on like a projector, talking to her. Hey, Miss Piggy, I heard she was having a piggly ass party. So since you're having a piggly ass party, I got a surprise for your piggly ass bitch. Bring me down like, oh, you got a surprise for me? Bitch, where is that? She go around to the side of the truck, tip on the side like, uh-uh, bitch, don't do it. You know Jocelyn crazy. She one of them Gucci bitches. I wouldn't do it. Now, next thing you know, these men come out the truck with a big-ass damn roasted pig. One of them big-ass luau-ass pigs with the apples in the mouth. I was like, what? Really? Let me tell y'all, quick story time. Me and my husband went to Hawaii for our honeymoon, right? We saw them do the whole roast the pig. Saw them pulled on up out the ground with the stones on it and all. It didn't have an apple in his mouth. But, you know, it was a big-ass roasted pig. Me and my husband like, damn, this shit about to be off the chain. You know, <laughs> we we country folks. We eat pork all the goddamn time. That ain't scared the shit out of me, girl. We got the pork because it's shredded. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, um, they shred it up. Kind of like carnitas or whatever, right? We thinking this shit finna go hard in the pain. We was in Hawaii on our honeymoon. And we got fucked up. We at the luau. Thinking this pig finna, finna go in. We take a big ass mouthful of it, y'all. When I tell you that was the most unseasoned ass pork I have ever ever had in my life and pork is naturally salty when i tell you i don't know if roasting it in the ground takes all the soul out of it but it just tasted like like meat <laughs> it tastes like meat it didn't have no flavor to it hawaiian people please don't come at me Please don't shoot me because I plan on going back to Hawaii. My husband, he's taking me back to Hawaii, God damn it. I don't, and I, I probably want some more roasted pig just for the enjoyment, just for the experience of it. So please don't come for me because I'm not sending you the, I love the shit out the luau. The luau was out the damn chain. It was nice as hell. But, um, yeah, that roasted pig wasn't all that damn good. But anyways, y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if there was anything that I missed, drop it down below and let me know. Thank y'all, as always, for watching. Thank you for praying for my brother. I sure enough appreciate ya. As always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.